Yeah, good evening, um, dear YouTube followers of my channel. I mean, it has been pretty a long time since I've uploaded my last video because I have been busy with a couple of other stuff in my life. But finally, I was working on another project the last couple of months and I thought it would be worth that I could share it with you. Maybe you can remember that I made a video, uh, I think one year or so, something uh, like that ago, where I made a video how to use the Bluetooth audio streaming on a ESP32 processor, how to integrate a small DSP that you can make the crossover for the tweeter and for the bass speaker. And finally, I made something like an, yeah, DSP controlled Bluetooth speaker out of it. But a lot of people came to me and asked me like how they can extend the code or how can they adjust the code to modify it for their own speakers and stuff like that. And finally, I got an idea. Hey, why is it not worth maybe to merge everything together, uh, let's say on a complete new board with here the ESP32 together with the class D amplifier, making some external yeah, headers here, for example, for an analog audio input also to connect, for example, an IRDA receiver or also some external push buttons. Yeah, and that is the project which I have, yeah, which is the state from now. Let's, so let's call it like that. There's even a second board with another audio amplifier. But before I can show you now how that exactly works and stuff like that, maybe I can show you some block diagrams which I have prepared here for you. So I hope you can see it quite well. But the main idea is we have a baseboard which is shown here in the block diagram and the baseboard is basically that device here. So you can see we have the ESP32 on it and you all know that ESP32 supports Bluetooth, but also Wi-Fi. So this means we have here the Bluetooth so that you can stream one time audio via smartphone or via laptop, for example, into the ESP32. But then we also have a Wi-Fi control. So this means in my last video, all the parameters were fixed uh, exactly to the speaker, but now we have some kind of control channel here uh, with a yeah, desktop UI software, which I will show you later uh, there. And with that, you can control like all the parameters here on the DSP. Then we have here the audio signal processor, which is basically just a software stack running inside the ESP32. We have some kind of system power management, let's call it like that, to control the power state to control like the external IOs, for example, with the push buttons, with the control status LEDs, but also for the um, IRDA remote control. And we have here a two uh, channel audio power amplifier. So this I can show you here once again. We have here one time, um, yeah, external screw header. Here you can see, so this is your power input. You just connect your power supply up to 24 volts. You have here the output for two speakers. This here is the MA1207TP from Infin Technologies. It's a multi-level class D amplifier chip. We have here the ESP32, which is handling all the Bluetooth and the Wi-Fi and also like the DSP processing and handling all the IOs and infrared uh, control and stuff like that. Then we have here a small audio ADC chip here. This is the PCM1808 from Texas Instruments so that you can also connect here an external analog audio source. Here is the um, terminal for the um, external uh, switch or for the external switches or for the control buttons. And this is the um, uh, header port for the IRDA remote. And yeah, so here you can see reverse polarity protection, some EMC filtering for the input. And here we have some power management. Here's a buck converter, some LDOs. And so, yeah, that's pretty it actually. And then you can see here, Okay, you still see it's a little bit DIY-like. Here's the IRDA receiver. We have some push buttons. We have an LED. And yeah, so this is basically a connector, but you can connect them here, basically. And this is for the IRDA, which you are connecting to that port. And then you would be able, theoretically, to make like an own case or something like that, 3D printed, where you can select, okay, I want to power up my board, um, mute, volume up, volume down. Uh, DSP means this is like the DSP configuration mode that it switches over to a Wi-Fi access point and then you can log in with your computer and like configure all the DSP parameters. And of course, you also have a pair button uh, that, for example, the Bluetooth pairing capability is then only active for a couple of seconds when you press pair and not everyone can connect to it. 
And then there was also the idea, because the ESP32 uh, not only has one I2S port, but it has like two I2S ports. So I had the idea, why not using both I2S ports and then making directly a 4 gen DSP. And luckily, the processing power is so unbelievably high that it really worked out that I made a second board here. This is also the MA12470P amplifier chip from uh, Infinite Technologies. That this is basically just, let's say, some kind of extension amplifier. And you can see here that I have here uh, a port, which is like uh, carrying all the I2S signals, some control signals, I2S C, but also the power. And then you can just plug that board here onto that base board onto it. And then you have some kind of a full Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and log audio in DSP processing for channel class D <laughs> amplifier solution, which is not much bigger than I think some sort of cigarette box. So this was basically a quick introduction, but now let's have a look what the features are because I guess this is more interesting. Um, yeah, as I said, or you already uh, heard from my introduction, we have Bluetooth wireless audio as input. We have analog stereo audio input. We have here the software stack inside ESP32, which is like doing a full, yeah, let's say four channel audio uh, signal processor. We can configure the input gains, the output gains, polarity per channel. We can select uh, mute and we can route any input channel to any output channel. Uh, we have, of course, high pass, low pass filters fully configurable. So that you can say, okay, I want to have 12 dB per um, uh, octave or like 24 dB per octave filtering. We have five parametric equalizers also per output channel, like bell equalizer, high shelving or low shelving. We can run up to 30 milliseconds uh, delay, also individually configurable per output channel so that you can like a phase align or time align your loudspeakers. We have a configurable power output limiter. We have an artificial bus enhancement algorithm which I have implemented here uh, inside the software stack. This is basically more or less the same what I have shown in my pretty first video on the Sigma DSP. And we also have a dynamic bass boost module, but I will show you in a minute what this means. Then we have the IRDA uh, remote control receiver. This is what I have shown you here um, on, on the uh, yeah, control board here. Um, so the basic idea is there is no fixed remote for that system, but you can use like any remote control you have already yeah, at your home from any other stuff. And then you just press some buttons and the device can learn basically the commands from the IR control, what you're using. And yeah, then you can just save the settings and yeah, control, for example, the power or the volume control with it. Then we have that integrated Wi-Fi access point. This means, um, yeah, we can log in with our computer into that device. Then we can run in real time music through it and configure it via a desktop or basically Windows based software I have implemented in C sharp. And we have a two channel multi level PWM class D audio amplifier up to two times 80 watts at four ohms. So this is basically here the small amplifier chip. And then we have that extension board. So that we also have the header okay so that you can connect it to the baseboard and then you can scale up once again to in some four output channels um, on the whole system in here okay now let's continue um, this is now the main audio flow how everything is working so at first here because i have separated a little bit because we have one channel audio flow and one let's say channel based um, uh, audio flow but let's have a look maybe at first the main audio flow. So you see here we have one time the Bluetooth audio input, but here also the analog audio input over the um, ADC converter. Okay, Bluetooth audio is run, running into some sort of sample rate converter because we have to modify the incoming audio stream uh, to um, pass it to the um, local audio clocking structure. Then we have here the Bluetooth audio volume control. This is basically the uh, two knobs on the smartphones you have when you control the volume. But in fact, the smartphone is only sending the information about the volume to the D DSP, but the volume has to be um, calculated inside the DSP processor, basically. And then we have here multiplexer. So it decides, is Bluetooth connection active or is it not? And whether it is yes, then it will take the Bluetooth audio stream. And if there's no Bluetooth connection, it will just run the analog audio input through it. Then we have the user volume control. This is basically 
um, when you're pressing here the knobs, volume up, volume down, for example, or also on the um, infrared remote control, then it is calculated in this block. Then we have the virtual bus system. This I will also show you in a minute once again, a dynamic bus boost. And then it is just splitting up here. You see then we have at this point the left channel, right channel, but also the monosum of two channels. And then you can, uh, or it is passed basically in the channel processing uh, blocks here. And each channel processing block, once again, consists out of the source select. So you can select every channel you want to have the left channel, right channel, or the summing channel. Then you can like configure the low pass, high pass, equalizer stuff. We have the mute polarity and gain. Of course, the limiter. And after the limiter, there is the level monitoring because you can see in the software a real-time level monitoring of all the audio levels. And then in the end, the delay. So the next thing is the virtual base system. Um, I have already explained it more or less in my pretty first video, basically on the Sigma DSP. Um, in fact, it is like at the beginning, there's a low pass filter here, which is using the summing uh, channel or the summed up uh, signal out of the left and right channel. It is doing a low pass signal so that you have some sort of, let's say, base frequency of, of the base signal here at this point. And then it is just yeah, calculating harmonics based on the uh, base signal here, which is uh, coming into that block, like generating the second, third, fourth harmonic and stuff like that. And then you can mix it with a dedicated level control here into that summing block, which is then summed into the left channel, not right channel, but also in the summing channel. So it basically has two parameters. So similar like it is in the Sigma DSP that you choose select one time bus frequency. So but should be considered as base signal. And then once again, the level, so how much it should uh, be something uh, once again here into the mixing block. And then once again, we can have a look at dynamic base boost module, how I call it. So the main idea behind this dynamic base boost module is that, yeah, just think of it if you have a small base driver that also like very small and power limit base drivers actually have a lot of base capability but only until a certain power point, uh, let's say, because then if the power is like too high, the uh, woofer will swing too much uh, in and out and also like the voice call gets hot and probably it's burned afterwards. And the idea is more or less that you are tracking the overall volume level here. And as long as you are under a certain uh, level of audio volume, it is pushing the base very, very high, let's say. And if you're coming over a certain threshold, the louder the output signal gets, the more it will reduce the base gain, actually, so that you have a pretty, pretty fat uh, bassy sound uh, when you are having a low or mid volume, let's say. And if you're pushing the amplifier then more or less to the limit or to very high output levels, then the gain of the bass is then reduced in the end. Yeah, and the whole thing is working like that, basically that at first there's a high pass filter with a configurable bass frequency, because as you know, most of the energy is basically in the bass signal, but the overall volume, what the human is considering is basically more or less high frequency stuff. So we are doing a level track layer or a level tracking basically of the high pass signal, which is coming here into it. Then we are calculating here again, more or less, which is like dependent on threshold and the maximum gain setting. This those are those two parameters which you can configure here. Yeah, and then it's uh, like calculating all the time a new gain depending on the actual volume and stuff like that. But as music is a quite dynamic signal, it is like, <laughs> yeah, pinging a lot at that point here, uh, the, the desired gains. And so we have to smooth it a little bit over time so that you don't have such abrupt changes, let's say in, in the base gain. And you can also configure here gain speed. And yeah, it calculates in the best gain in the end. And this is like being fed into a low shelving equalizer here, which is running over all channels. And this is then pushing in the end, the, the base signal here with that dedicated base gain, which is calculated here and a configurable base frequency you can configure in the software. And then in the end, you might wonder how the whole system runs. So uh, every time you get a new power and reset, or if it is at first time powered on, then you are what I have called the normal modes. This means Bluetooth audio is active, analog audio input is active, 
uh, the Wi-Fi and DSP configuration is switched off because you usually use it like one time to configure everything. Uh, our um, uh, IRTA remote control is active and also our status uh, LED is on. So status LED is basically here one time here on the left side, that, that small LED, what you can see here. But um, also here on the board, I mean, probably it's hard to see here uh, through the camera, but the LED is, I think, I'm not sure, I dislocated here uh, next to the uh, ADC converter. Yeah, and one time you have pressed the DSP config button. Um, DSP config button is basically that one here, the second from the right. Then it switches over into the so-called DSP configuration mode. And in the DSP configuration mode, Bluetooth is switched off because, yeah, unfortunately, ESP32 is not capable of handling Bluetooth and Wi-Fi at the same time. So I had to decide uh, either use Bluetooth at one time point or use Wi-Fi at one time point. So Bluetooth is switched off, but it still is using the analog audio input here. But you have now a Wi-Fi access point where you can log in with your computer. And then you can like start the configuration software. You're running a signal basically through the analog audio input into your DSP. And then you can yeah change all the parameter settings, for example. And then you can also save it. So all the parameters which are configuring over the software are basically stored inside the flash and are automatically starting up with the next uh, power cycle. Yeah, and as soon as you're making new power cycle, it goes back to the normal mode. And there's also one time a so-called sleep mode. So for example, um, if you are pressing on the IRDA remote control, the power up button, or if you are pressing here, the power button on the board, then it will go into the sleep mode. This means Bluetooth is off and log audio input is off, amplifier switched off. So that is really in a some sort of power saving mode where it is using very, very low power consumption so that it uh, doesn't run the batteries <laughs> uh, empty very, very fast. And yeah, so then we also have here, like here in the superscript, the one, which means the, there is some special button. This is the Bluetooth pairing button. This was here, the button quite on the right side. And if you're pressing that, then the device can be detected via the smartphone for a time frame of exactly 30 seconds. They can use to pair it. And in this mode, it will then blink quite fast, the status LED. And if you are paired one time, uh, then it is not detectable anymore. So the basic idea is just that not anyone can just randomly couple uh, then with a device here. Yeah, and that was pretty much the first overview. And I would consider um, that we switch over now to the practical demonstration, but I will do this. Yeah, in a new video. But probably once again, if you want to see it more again uh, in detail. So here I have already some here in the in the cell screen, the description here of the, all the signals. And yeah, that's pretty much it so far.